In this video, we're going to be tidying my auntie's house. She's had a lot on her mind recently. And as you can see, her house has suffered for it. Not only that, she's also naturally messy, just like me. And I know all too well how quickly things can get overrun with clutter. Especially when your mental health isn't doing great. I'm just showing you around before we start. But basically, every room in the house is similar to this. And I only had seven hours to make a difference. So I picked two rooms to focus on, the ones I'm showing you in this video. And as much as I wanted it to be perfect for her, with the time frame I had, my main goal was making it livable and comfortable. That's one of my auntie's chickens. She works for a farm charity. And basically, these two chicks were brought in. They were part of a school hatching project. And the school wanted to just discard them and let them die after they hatched. Luckily, one of the teachers couldn't bear that and they brought them into the farm and then my auntie's raised them ever since. She just adores them. They're called Popcorn and Nugget. And that's the kind of person she is. The most caring and generous person. And I wanted to do something for her that would take some of the weight off her shoulders. A cosy, clean home is good for the soul. Will she keep it this way after it's finished? Absolutely not. Her brain just isn't wired that way. I know that because, as I said, I'm exactly the same. But if it can ease her mind for even a week, I'm happy with that. So I thought I'd start in the kitchen, get rid of all the rubbish and get the surfaces clear. Gives us a nice blank canvas to get into the good stuff. I was buzzing to start actually scrubbing and cleaning. Don't like tidying away, but I love cleaning. I'd originally planned to take this time to clean my house. I always arrange a day each month with my mum where she'll have the boys so I can just focus on getting the house done top to bottom. But my house wasn't actually too bad. I'm actually doing okay with keeping on top of it at the minute. So I thought, why not take this time to help somebody else? And bless her, she was happy to let me film, so that's a win-win for me. I would eventually like to start cleaning other people's houses too. Maybe like once a month while my kids are little. But I would love to help people whose houses have gotten on top of them. For free, obviously. It's just finding people who are local, because at the minute I don't drive. Learning to drive is on my bucket list of 2023. Because I am sick of having to rely on other people if I want to take my boys on a day out. It's just horrible. It makes you feel like a burden. That's just me anyway. I did learn to drive when I was 18, but I was a really shy and anxious person back then. And I actually failed my driving test three times. One of the times it was driving on the wrong side of the road out of the test centre. So I basically failed before I even got on the road. And after that, I just kind of gave up. I wish I'd have persevered, but it's happened now and it is what it is. And yeah, I'm a completely different person now and I think I'd be able to do it quite easily. The obstacle now is finding the funds. As I've said in another video, we live paycheck to paycheck and driving lessons are just so expensive. But anyway, I'll get there. At this point, after getting rid of all of that clutter on the windowsill, it was already looking so much better. Clutter is like kryptonite for messy people. So easy to accumulate, but so hard to get rid of. For me personally, it's because I'm so sentimental. Everything has a memory and a meaning and it's so hard to get rid of it. I'm the worst with birthday cards and my son's drawings. But with that, since I did declutter January, I got a little binder to kind of contain all of the drawings. Because before that, they were just spilling out of every single drawer in the house and it was just chaos. But yeah, I found you really do have to be cutthroat with clutter. As upsetting as it might be at the time... Otherwise, it just takes over your life. Does anyone else have a problem with washing dishes? Hear me out. I cannot stand the way it makes my hands feel after I've finished. After I've been washing dishes, if I try and touch any kind of fabric or anything with texture, it just makes me feel sick. It is the worst feeling. And I've tried using the gloves, but then the water ends up getting down the back of them and then running down my arms and that's equally as upsetting. First world problems, I know. This fryer was so satisfying to clean. I only had time to clean the outside of it though. I did want to do the inside too, but if I'd have done that, it'd have taken too long. There was so much more that still needed to be done. And my main goal was the appearance. I wanted to make the exterior look nice and cosy for my auntie, rather than going into cupboards and things like that as well and decluttering and cleaning things she couldn't see. So yeah, I just had to prioritise how it looked outwardly. I do want to go back and do some more rooms at some point too. But as I found when I arrived, it's more like a week's worth of work rather than a day. I really was hoping to get the whole house done for her, but oh well. 
She was so happy when she got home from work and we were so proud with what it looked like and what we managed to get done in such a short space of time. When I say we, I forgot to mention, halfway through doing this kitchen, my cousin arrived to help, which was literally a godsend. I was so grateful because I was feeling so overwhelmed. So yeah, you'll see her pop up later on. Bless her, she's so lovely. If any of you watch my TikToks, you'll have seen the video where I clean her house. Because she's actually got so much on her plate at the minute too. Her six months old's been having really, really bad skin issues. He's been in and out of hospital. And her boyfriend's recently been diagnosed with heart issues. So she really didn't need to take the time out of her day to come and help. But I'm really grateful she did. I know cleaning's like therapy for some people though, isn't it? It can take your mind off things. In a way, it can be almost meditative. But yeah, shout out to my cousin. Thank you. That looks so much better. I was so chuffed with that. I'm so excited to show you the way everything turned out later on. Because I don't know what I was expecting, but it surpassed those expectations. I don't know whether you've noticed, but the tone of my voice has changed a little bit. And that's because I'm having to do my voiceover in little chunks whenever I get the opportunity. As I'm speaking to you right now, this clean was filmed over two weeks ago. But I've just been so busy with kids and work and my own house that it's been hard to find the opportunity to do these voiceovers. So in the first section of this video, I was sat in my boyfriend's car editing and now I'm sat in the living room in the middle of the night because my only opportunity was after the kids had gone to bed. Mum life, eh? There aren't enough hours in the day. Look how much better that looks. There's nothing we can do about the imperfections on the worktops, but even so it looks a thousand times better than it did. I wasn't sure whether those splash marks were going to wipe off, but they came off so easily, so that was a nice surprise. And we were almost getting somewhere with one half of the kitchen. The other half, not so much, but you'll see for yourself in a second. That's why I was starting to panic, because this had taken me two hours. But I thought to myself, I'd rather get one room done well, than try and get every room done and do a shoddy job. I knew I could always come back and do the other rooms, and that's what I planned to do. I know full well the rooms we've done won't look the same when we come back, but we've massively reduced the amount of rubbish and clutter, and that'll help us so much with keeping on top of things. But as I said before, I don't expect her to keep it tidy, and never in a million years would I dream of saying anything like, I took the time out of my day to tidy this for you, so you should repay me by keeping it clean. That's not why I've done this. I knew going into this clean who my auntie was. I know how she struggles, and this is her home. My only goal is to make the house feel cosy and comfortable for however long that might be. I've said it multiple times before, but I'm an extremely messy person myself. And I was an even messier child. And I remember the feeling, the guilt, when after asking time and time again for me to clean my room, my mum wouldn't be able to take it anymore and she'd completely gut it while I was at school. I just found tidying so overwhelming. It felt like an impossible task at the time. But yeah, she'd spend all day on her day off from work while I was at school making it look lovely. And I just knew I wouldn't be able to make it stay that way as much as I would have loved to. It honestly, truly isn't in everyone's nature. Nice mouldy can there. But yeah, as I was saying, it's not in everyone's nature. No matter how much we love a clean and tidy space too, and no matter how good our intentions are, it's a hard thing to get across to people who don't have that struggle. Because I know it just comes across as laziness, but it isn't. Some people suffer badly with something called executive dysfunction. And then there were others who just weren't taught basic life skills and time management. Keeping a tidy space is a skill that's learned and needs to be taught. And I think as parents we can forget that sometimes. And we expect our kids to be able to do these things automatically. But anyway, I'd like to think my auntie knows that she doesn't have to feel that guilt or pressure when it comes to me. There's no judgement here whatsoever. And three hours in, my cousin arrived. And so she's just sorting through and reorganising that cupboard while I try and clean the fridge. And as I was saying, when it comes to people who are similar to me, I think the only way we get better at keeping a space tidy is through constant repetition and training our brains to form these habits. And the moment we drop the ball, chaos emerges. It happens time and time again in my house. All it takes is a bad night's sleep or a bad mental health day and the house will be a pigsty within 24 hours. It's exhausting. Look how satisfying that is. But yeah, I've found there have been two times in my life where I've massively improved in my ability to keep on top of things. The first was after having kids. A switch just flipped on inside of me. 
and I just wanted to do better for them. And the second, strangely, was starting social media. Making these kind of videos over and over again, looking over at my old footage and seeing my cleaning processes and where I tend to fall short, it's taught me so much and showed me how to become so much more efficient. I've also learned so much from my followers. Really simple things that I just wasn't taught. Things like I could wash my shower curtain in the washing machine. Up until a few weeks ago, I was bathing it in the bath with bleach. I just never even thought to put it in the washing machine. And most recently, I learned that you clean the fridge from top to bottom. Not the other way around, like I did in the video and wound loads of people up. But yeah, I'm forever learning and improving all because of social media. And I'm so grateful for it. It really has changed my life in ways that I wasn't expecting. But anyway, this oven was so satisfying to clean. I unfortunately only had time to do the hob, but I'm definitely coming back at a later date to give the inside a good scrub. As you can imagine, it seriously needs it. But so does my own oven, to be fair. And hasn't my cousin done an amazing job on this cabinet? It's colour coordinated and everything. And next she got to work on cleaning out the inside of the fridge, while I carried on with the outside of the oven. I think at this point we had about two and a half hours left before my auntie got home from work. So we were up against it. But honestly, we both felt so positive. We had the music on and we were just bopping away with the mindset that whatever we get done gets done. Even if we only got the kitchen done, it would have made all the difference. Luckily, we got the living room done too, as you'll see soon, so we were well chuffed. The living room didn't need cleaning in the same way the kitchen did, though. The problem with that room is that it was absolutely chock full of clutter. My auntie actually had a lodger up until the day we filmed this video, and so the room she normally would have stored her clothes in was taken up. So most of it was just clothes that needed to be put away. And I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but she works in a farm charity shop. So she also has a lot of things that she's been given that she needs to take to the shop. So yeah, that room was just a case of finding space for everything. Not everything, might I add. Because there were some things in there she just did not need to keep. I had to walk to my grandma's down the road to collect this hoover. Because my auntie doesn't own one that works. But that walk and fresh air was definitely needed. Cleaning for seven hours straight is more exhausting than you might think. Mentally as well as physically. We just so badly wanted to do a good job for her. And time was just passing rapidly. But we got onto the living room eventually. So what I decided to do first was try and get rid of some of the clothes. Now that my auntie's lodger had moved out, I could just take the clothes upstairs to the spare room where they were going to be kept. As I said before though, I obviously didn't have time to sort through the clothes and fold them and put them away. But at least now they're out of sight in a room that isn't being used. And my auntie can get round to sorting them when she feels up for it. Peep the One Direction bed sheets there. They were my cousins when she was a teenager before she moved out. And now my auntie just uses them. She's not very precious and she's not the kind of person that's into aesthetics. So why not if they do the job, eh? If you're wondering where my cousin was at this point, she was in the kitchen getting rid of some clutter that had been smushed down the side of the fridge. But I wasn't able to film that, unfortunately. I film on my phone, you see. The camera's excellent quality and it'll do the job for the time being. I was just giving the settees a wipe down here. I don't know if you saw the ashtray on the table, but my auntie's a smoker. And aside from the awful things smoking does to your body, it's also not great for your home. But it's a free country. We all have our vices, don't we? Mine's Pepsi. But as I was saying, I would eventually love to be able to buy some filming equipment and have a proper setup. Then I'd be able to film multiple things going on at the same time. But I'm just not in the position to be able to do that right now. I'm just grateful I've got such a good quality camera on my phone. And I didn't have to buy it either. My stepdad loves his gadgets. And he always has to have the newest model of the iPhone. Which is an absolute win for me because I get the hand-me-downs. So yeah, it's great to aspire to things but it's also so, so important to be grateful for everything you do have. I always like to remind myself of that saying, there was a time you could only dream of the things you have now. And it's so true, and I do adore my little life. So at this point, I was starting to make the living room look a little bit cosy. Getting the settee done really spurred me on to want to get the rest of the room clear, because at that point, I could kind of see how it was starting to shape up. Anyway... As of this moment, I've been filming this voiceover in 15 minute increments for about 18 days. 
So you've been gifted with about seven versions of my personality. I hope you've enjoyed that. It's honestly pot luck who I wake up as of a morning. But yeah, this table was pretty stubborn with its stains. So I had to go over it a number of times. Put a little bit of Zaflora on to make it smell extra nice too. And in the kitchen, my cousin was working on wiping down the sides because they had a few grease stains. And I was working on getting rid of these clothes to reveal the most gorgeous chair. Look at it. I love it. It really adds character to the room. I actually think that was one of her charity shop finds, so that makes it all the more special to me. And this corner here is actually full of baby toys. As I said earlier, my cousin's recently had a baby and my auntie just dotes over him. So she saves toys she finds, but hasn't actually found places for them yet. So all my cousin's doing there is just trying to make the chaos more orderly. Seeing if we can reduce the amount of bags and the height of the heap so it isn't such an eyesore. But obviously we didn't get rid of any of it. And you can see at this point that the room's actually starting to be carved out and you can see what a beautiful space it actually is. There was light at the end of the tunnel here. And it just put me in the best mood. I felt so accomplished. And I'm sure my cousin did too. And where there used to be boxes piled up against the window, I thought I'd make a little cosy corner. And I'm really chuffed with it. It's amazing how the light starts to hit the room once the clutter goes. It truly looks like a different space altogether. I don't know if you're thinking the same, but it feels like home now. Obviously, we still had a way to go. We weren't done yet. So I started on the dusting while my cousin started doing the hoovering. And once that was done, I started to use my very trusty mop that everyone on TikTok hates to get the floors spick and span. I don't know why people have such an issue with my mop. It's the only kind of mop that I can get on with and I have tried loads. Had to add loads of bleach to the floor because obviously chickens are walking around all the time and I don't know when the last time my auntie actually mopped was. But saying that, the floors actually didn't look too dirty. My kitchen floor looks worse than this after 24 hours of being mopped. Especially when it's been raining or the dog's done zoomies. So yeah, I was actually a bit disappointed with that because I love mopping a dirty floor. Squeezing out all the brown water. It's the little things. And I know you're probably thinking, ugh, you're gross. And yes, yes I am. There's me and my cousin trying to carry the heaviest box up the stairs. But I said in another one of my videos, I absolutely love things like that. Like blackhead popping and rug cleaning and all of that kind of stuff. Love it. And at this point, it was about half past three in the afternoon and my auntie finished work at four. So now it was all about adding the final touches and making it look extra cosy. And I thought adding some flowers would make it look absolutely gorgeous. So I ran to the shop while my cousin rifled through my auntie's collection of trinkets to find some vases. And I think we might have gone overboard, but it just brightens up a room, doesn't it? I got her a nice box of chocolates too and moved one of the lamps in from another room to give it a nice cosy glow in the evenings. And here are some before and afters just to jog your memory of what it looked like when we first got here. We poured so much love into this and I really hope it shows. And honestly, even I'm baffled with how much we got done in such a short space of time. Now it looks like a home and it's welcoming and it's airy. And yeah, I'm just really chuffed and proud of us. And I really hope you enjoyed watching too. And here's the living room before and after. And if you did enjoy this video, please feel free to watch some of my others. It had massively helped me as a new creator on here. And it'll hopefully put me on the path to be able to help other people that need it too. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day.